Hi everybody, I hope you're well and hello Rax, hello Andy, I know you're watching. Thank you very much and I hope you have a quiet night. Well, let's get straight onto it then because the day has arrived, the tension is unbearable, it's time to fit the kitchen. Amazingly, it's here. It's a true handleless kitchen. Now, I've never heard of a true handleless kitchen before. I googled a couple of kitchens that I liked, just photos, you know, everything, sent them to the kitchen company that we were going to use. Yeah, do you do something like this? Oh yeah, we do that. Yeah, that's a true handleless kitchen. You are. Uh, well, it turns out that if you've got a kitchen door, kitchen cabinet door with a handle on, that's, you know, normal. And then you've got a handleless kitchen where that door has got like a, maybe a groove cut into it that you, you open it with. Yeah. And a true handleless has nothing neither of those it's just a, a the panel of the door or the drawer front and they are separated with a like a decorative rail and you get your fingers behind that rail and then that's how you open the drawers or the doors hence true handleless if you take the groove from a handleless kitchen as some kind of handle this is true handleless yeah, whatever. Right, well, that look nice, so that's the way it is. But because of that, they go together slightly different, and we've never done that. We've never fitted one of these before, so it's all, you know, it's a sort of um, a step into the unknown sort of thing. Uh, and they can be quite fiddly, potentially, but who knows? We've never done it before. So we're going to go step by step, and we're going to show you how this particular one, uh, from this particular place, Aristocraft, in Briley Hill, West Midlands. The details uh, are in the description of this video. This is the, the trade arm of that company, because it's Mood Kitchens. That's technically who we've bought the kitchen from, Mood Kitchens. As I say, all the details are in the uh, description of this video. Uh, and we're gonna go through it, everything that we find, any plus points, negative points, little niggly bits that might help you out, which is all gonna be included in this video. Uh, up to, it's, it's not a how you install a kitchen, because a lot of it is just fitting a kitchen, and we've done those videos before. If you go through our back catalogue, you'll see them, we're going into a lot more detail. This is more of the true handleless kind of uh, tips, uh, do's and don'ts, should you be fitting one and you've never done one before. So, so there we go. So let's crack on with it then. And uh, it's gonna be delivered in uh, about a couple of hours. So yeah, let's wait around for it and let's start. There we have it. Everything's in the house, all the units. Bit of waiting some of them because they all come with the drawers, everything already fitted. All the uh, inserts and what have you, all the doors are on them. So we'll get these opened, do a quick check on everything. Make sure it's all as it should be, there's no damages. Appliances are here as well. And also we've got these bits of metal but we'll talk about them further into the episode because this is a true handleless kitchen as Adam would have already explained at the start of the video and it's the first time that I've ever done one. So I'm looking forward to this. So should we get on with it? As you'll see, I've cracked on with it. I haven't shown you up to this so far because we have got um, another kitchen on the channel already, which is on the screen now which goes through how I set it out, laser it, check everything, mark on the walls where all the units are going. Um, what I did do is I got this plan that you can see on there. You know what I say on the channel? Always trust the plan. You can see my uh, numbers then, one, two, three, four in blue pen. Went round and marked them on the top, identifying the code on here first, which corresponds with the code on the plan to make sure I don't put them in the wrong place. Um, and then I've just set myself out. Um, we've had a bit of a jigger poker on this one because the plan was showing a 900 and it's actually a 1,000. So we, I had to set it out and then set it out again. Consequently, I'm to move it that way, 100 mil. 
because that wouldn't go in. Um, in order to get this in the center, we're just gonna have to cut the corner post there, which was, we know that anyway, that was always intentional because we couldn't get this over that way enough because of the, if you remember from previous episodes, where the, the joist was, plus trying to plan that in relation to where cupboards are gonna go at the time when we didn't quite know, I say we, when Adam didn't quite know what he was having, would, would have been difficult. So that's the um, what we're doing there, that's not a problem. This one, corner post will be perfectly fine. That one will be a 70-70 as uh, standard. Now, I wanna quickly go into a few things that um, why this true handleless is different. You set this out the same, all your tops are the same, for this company anyway. Adam will go through the details of this company in our contact, either at the start of the video or later on in the episode, either or. I'll leave him to do that. What you have got is you have got these sort of scalloped um, carcass there, look. That goes all the way across the top there. And on the drawers, it goes across the middle as well. So as you can see there, if I get into there for you, you can sort of see that there, look, scalloped out. And all these are scalloped out the same. And the reason for that is, if I go this way, you have got these special trims now you will see these further into the episode, I'll explain what they are, but um, these are the, for the larder. Now this gives you a space, I'm not gonna go into this, it's easy to show you, if you're like me, you need to see something visual. Like um, the guy Stuart, who we've dealt with, actually came out this morning and had a quick chat with us because I went and spoke to him and said, listen mate, never done one before, do us a favour, and he said yeah, and he came out. So these go and will fix onto the, the gaps that I've just showed you. And these ones go between the larders. You can have a 35 mil gap between your larder. So imagine a larder goes there, larder goes there. And when the doors, the doors then close against this bit. And then it leaves a gap there to get your things in to open the cupboard. Because true handleless means exactly that. There is no handles, no finger pull. Um, nothing at all like you would see on other handleless. Where, like mine at home, I've got... On my door, I've got like a bit of a, a bit of a scallop at the top there. That's handleless because I've put no hardware onto the door. But this is true handleless because it hasn't got any. So when the metal trim goes on the top there, like the work top goes on there, that lovely trim goes on top of there. So that's what you see. You don't see the carcass then. And you put your hands in there, that gap there, and open your door up. That's how you do it. Very, very nice. But when you've never done it before, you've got to get your head around it because there are certain things you've got to do. Um to make sure it all goes in properly. I mean, I'm gonna to have to go through and obviously do all the doors at a later stage, adjust all the drawer fronts and everything, make them all level. Because with it being handleless as well, you know, it's all very, it's all gotta be changed up, that's all gotta be changed up and down. Because you're gonna see it a mile off. And likewise, these, you have to you have to cut filler pieces at the back, 35 mil fixed onto your cupboards. So the brassing at the front, it goes in parallel with your cupboards. So it's, yeah, it's all just a bit more of a, a faff, I'm gonna say, but it'll look lovely. Like I say, you'll have these vertical brass pieces in between each larder, so you can get your fingers in and open them up. Cause we've got a couple of appliance ones here and that's a pull out larder there, which is here. Big heavy thing with all the cages and things in it. So there we are. I've been pulling things like cables through, ready for appliances, stay at the back there, look. I'm gonna leave this one for today now because we've got to get the plumbing into here to get into this cupboard, which is a sink unit. I've already removed our tap that we've had on since the start, since we've got water back on. For the plaster strap, all the tap on the floor that was here. So that's in, we're just gonna get the waste into here now and then we can push this cupboard, which goes about there. And then the corner goes into there and the corner returns like that and goes against this door. So that'd be quite nice. So, Next time you see any footage from me will be, this will be installed, all of this will be installed, and I'll be starting to cut and measure the, these metal trims in, because there are, I'll quickly show you these as well, there are end caps and things as well in here, uh, 
there was a bag open. There's these sort of end cap when you cut them, these fix onto the ends. Nice sort of if I can get the net bag. So that's the corner one. And that trim there that goes onto the end of it to form a corner. And you've got these red things then. These are what clip the track to the cupboard. You clip it into the back of the track and then screw it into the side of your carcass. Just clip it in. So there we are. I'll get on with it. And then we'll have a look at these lovely trims in a minute. Okay, come on. Who spotted it then? I thought, what the f... Wrong draw pack. I'd put that one in, which is for the island. Which is why the depth didn't match up here. And I thought, oh, why would you do that? That's why. Good eat wrong. Done now. Should we carry on? So we're uh, moving on now. Ads here today sorting the... Um, I'm going to sort the bit of plumbing out there, ready to go, so I can move this cupboard into there. And I have now started fitting these, um, I'm going to say extrusions, if that's the right word, uh, is that the right word or not, which is these, these bits of metal that produce the handleless look. Now, what you have to do, and I apologise, I've, I've moved ahead and forgot, you can just, can you see in the back of there, that bit of light stuff there, that's a 35mm packer that you have to put at the back of the cupboards. What that does is, is this here, I'll drop this down, that there, this part between my fingers now is 35 mil. Now, we didn't want to show you all of it because we've put, we've cut the kittens on the channel now, so I think how much you'd want to see, did we add? No. Plus I forgot and I had to take it off because I forgot we were going to show people. We won't mention that. Alright, okay, well thanks. So all you do, you set your 35 mil at the back. So what I've had to do, I've screwed a 35 mil piece on the back of this, back of this one. And then the panel then fits against that and against your, um, your cupboard, your base unit. So of course you've got your glass end all in there. Then what you do is, um, because it's only aluminium, the 35 mil at the back is the same, like I've just showed you, the 35 mil at the back of these, these um, extrusions again. And then you, what you do then is you use pilot hole and you screw directly into them because they're only aluminium. Obviously you correct the correct pilot hole for it so you don't make the hole too big. Screw straight into there. And then what you do is, on this one only, you then just get a screw from here and screw it into the panel to keep this tight. That's the only one you've got to do on this one. Now what I did do first, and I really wish I'd have showed you but I completely forgot is the honest answer. What I did first was I plumbed up my panel and put some of the um, these brackets, these simple brackets, just these. Yeah, a pack of 50 from Screwfix. Other shops are available. Um, just at the back of this panel against the wall and then screw this panel so I knew it was perfectly plumb. And then once that was done, obviously then put my packers on the side, like I've just told you, 35 mil there, 35 mil in between here and push that into it and screw it all into so that solid. I've also put a bracket up there, you can see. Same on this one, there's a 35 mil packer between this cupboard and this cupboard. And this is what I've just showed you, which is that one. It's got a 35 mil a bit at the back of it. And likewise, again, you just put the screws all the way through into aluminium, pilot all into there. And then what you do is you then screw your cupboard then into each other through the packer. Is this making sense? Because I forgot to show you. I'm really sorry, I wish I'd have showed you. But that packer there, look, is screwed to this cupboard. So once I put this piece in, into there, I'll then screw this cupboard into that packer. Does that make sense? And then I will go ahead and put brackets across the top. I'll put brackets here in the middle of this one. So this is all solid, because this is the fridge and freezer. That's what we're gonna do. So now what we're gonna do, or you do it if you wanna have the honors, and if you wanted to. Sure. You just push, you obviously cut it to height. In this, is, this instance, um, you don't use any kind of end cap or anything because it's gonna be flush at the top and flush at the bottom. So we just push that into place. Ready? Yeah. And it means a bit of a wiggle because there's a, as if you know, when you, if you fit the kitchens before with these tall larders, there's always a bit of a bow in the whole weight of them. So, but it will go in, there we are. So once that's flush, and I did do it, like I said, I had to take it off. I just pile it hold straight into the aluminium and you just screw straight into it and that's it. On this end, you will have the um, scribe piece against the wall and we know that's lovely and plumb that wall because we did it and we know that's going to be plumb so that'll be a nice parallel cut, won't it, Ad? Yeah. 
Well, I hope so, because yeah. I'll put the wall in and I'll put the kitchen, so I hope so. If it's not, it's my fault, isn't it? So you, you, you did do that one, didn't you? I did do that one, yeah. Yeah, it should be all right. <laughs> <laughs> um, and I believe what the kitchen fi um, supplier said, that they then allow, because you generally, I'm told, you don't put um, corners and power on these kitchens when you have wall cupboards and things. What they tend to do is a piece of print across the top, which is the same thickness as this, just to finish it off or sort of frame the top of the doors. Now, do you want to put a door on now or should we wait to the doors on the show? Maybe it works after that. Uh, yeah, we'll get this on and get the door on. And, and then we'll, yeah. okay, we'll do that then, shall we? Yeah, yeah, we'll get this fitted and then we'll show you how the door sits on that. Because I wasn't too sure, but I am now. Yeah. Now I've seen it. Okay. Right then, we'll get this done and we'll be back in, a, well, three seconds. Right, as you can see, we're getting there, and now it's just time for the finishing touches, which is really where the difference between like a so-called normal kitchen or a different style of kitchen, a true handleless, really comes into it because of these rails. And of course, it's a little bit of a headache, and if it's the first time we've ever done it, as to which, which rails go where and how they're fixed in, and Rich has described how, how these go in, but... That rail there, which goes against an end panel to a cupboard, is different to that one that goes between two cupboards, which are different to these rails, the horizontal ones for the drawers and the cabinets. So it was all a bit, how do we, uh, which is which, how do we do it, uh, how they get fixed in, blah, blah, blah. Just slow us down a little bit, but we're getting there now, and now we know what we're doing. We're going to show that one going in, how to do it, we're going to show, and then these drawers here and how we do that. And there's also a couple of options that we've been given in terms of finishing it against the panel, uh, which will be here, there, various places. Um, and then we'll talk about whether or not you want to use them or not, or whether you like that one. And we'll go for that in a sec, but there's, a, there's more than one option for there. In terms of this, we set all this out, standards, uh, standard height, uh, 870, uh, because we're governed uh, also by my, uh, in retrospect, um, it's going to look nice, isn't it? That design, that detail. I always wanted it to go, I, I can't remember where I saw it, but the I, I didn't want an upstand into the window. Um, I just wanted the, uh, the worktop to go straight into it. Can't remember where I saw it, but I thought that looks nice. So I built the extension. Obviously, you have that idea. It's got to be like sort of day one. So the, the extension was built with that in mind, and it's all worked out rather lovely. I'm quite, I'm quite happy with that. Yes, there was tolerances with the screed and legs, all that sort of stuff. But anyway, not the most cost-effective way of doing stuff in terms of the granite because that's got to be that uh, so wide now. So if I was to do it again, again with these two windows close together, it's all going to be a bit awkward for the fitters and the design for as less joints as possible but that's a different video but yeah so we're governed by that so we set everything up to go into there it's all set at 870 it's all lovely and then we got to here and then when this rail went on that the door kept catching the rail so if you were to do uh, a true handler's kitchen what do you reckon rich raise it up to eight what's it uh, sorry, sorry. seven seven eight eighty raise kitchen up to 880 for that yeah, if, you, if you're not sort of governed by heights like we are. Design ideas. And the reason why you did it 870 is we knew this floor was perfectly flat all the way over. I generally do mine 880 to give me more room to uh, put the prints on without cutting, for example. But bear in mind that 870 has got to be the smallest dimension or the smallest height in your kitchen. Even if it means 890 over that side of the kitchen. Because 870 always allows, especially non-integrated uh, appliances to go under your worktop. 870 has got to be minimum. So we did that with that in mind. Um, or well, that being said, I should say. And then we put the rail on and then we tried to open the door and it wouldn't open. It kept hitting that rail along the top. Uh, the feet were weighing down to nothing on there, so it was as flat as it can be, um, at, well, as small as it could be, I should say, and it still wouldn't go. So what do we do? Well, we could have raised the kitchen up 10 mil. Yes, it would have thrown that out, but there's a there's a 25 mil knock-on on that window, so it would have been all right. However, we'd already fitted all that, and that would have been a bit of a... Well, we would have sworn, wouldn't we, Rich? Or, I think. Can we just point out as well, we were told in the showroom... Standard. Yeah. yeah, fair enough. That's we fair enough. Yeah, well. yeah. So we went, we, we went into it with confidence as well and everything. Um, so uh, how do we get over it? 
got the multi-tool out and I cut half the feet off. So there goes the warranty on that thing, don't tell anybody. Um, and now it fits, so there we go. There's still enough uh, of the foot to adjust, but the floor, luckily, as well, I so said luckily, as we knew, was completely flat anyway, so there's no issues. And now this goes in. So now we're gonna show you how these rails go in once it's cut to length. We'll show you, as I say, the end bits, options that you've got, whether you use them or not. Uh, yeah, and then we'll go from there. And as you may have noticed at the beginning of the video, there's a pay promotion thing in the, in, in the top corner because ages and ages ago, got to be over a year, I would have thought, um, we were sent something, uh, a little gizmo, a little invention. Uh, we'll go into more detail in a second. Uh, of uh, In terms of plinths and how to keep that corner, that internal corner together so it doesn't spread over time or, and whatnot. We'll go into that in a sec. Uh, yeah, and then... And then we'll crack on, and then that'll be this kitchen finished. Well, as mentioned, we're putting these plinths on now. And sometimes what can happen, if you just clip them in as, as normal, this joint here, where the one meets the other, they tend to, over time, they can start to separate and it all looks a bit unsightly. Now, just to give you a bit of background into this, we put a kitchen on YouTube uh, about a year ago, just over a year ago. This is, this, there was a couple of episodes to it. This is the form that you're looking for, which goes into more detail of, of you know, probably how to fit out the set out of the kitchen, blah, blah, blah. And in it, in that video, Rich used his, um, what are they called, door, uh, what are the door things called? Because we were putting the doors on, yeah, in the same, the same episode, we were using the, um, they're just door, I want to say door stands, but apologies to Dave from Profit. We put it on the screen now, I think, yes. to show them what they're actually called, Absolutely. the door stands on yeah. these. Yeah, I mean, you've probably seen them before, that's half of it. And, and basically, we use that, or Richard used that in the video. Dave from uh, Profit Innovations, it's his company, um, got in touch. He's the inventor. He's the inventor, yes, yeah. yes, yeah. well said, yes, he's, he's the inventor. Um, he got in touch, he said, oh, you use my um, my door holder. Again, we'll, we'll, it, it, we'll put it on screen now just to make sure we get it right. Um, I do other stuff as well. I, I do this... Um, uh, what are they called? Pro, uh, profit, 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 clip, clip profit, lock. profit, plinth lock, which sorts out this bit of a bit of an issue here, which we're going to fit now. And he, but what he'd done again about a year ago, he set out this pack, and he uh, and there's little pads here for the bottom of those the door holder, uh, which which are nice, you know, if you're working uh, in uh, on nice floors and whatnot, just to protect that. That's ACE he even says they do uh, wheels for these that attach on, so you can create a bit of a dolly with them, which again is, is a great idea. And there's all these little bits that he's, uh, that he's invented and he's getting it all off. As I say, it's from Profit Innovations. Um, yeah, so get on their website, have a look, and uh, you'll be, uh, I think you'll be surprised at what actually what's out there to make your life a little bit easier and also solves this issue here of these two, uh, of this joint separating over time. So you can just do a job, walk away, and you're never gonna have an issue. So what, what do we reckon they? Uh... So I, I'm gonna think, start at the bat, this one, this one here, obviously that one goes behind there like that and all sits flush, if you can see that. Can you see that on there? Yes, yeah, I can. And I presume then what you do, you put this one on the back, and I presume, typical, typical, typical bloke, not looking at instructions, just gonna go straight in front, just guess. So that one will go on that back one there, because you're butting this one into that one. And then on here, you put this one. And what you do then, you then slide it in. When you slide the plinth in, you put, put that and it locks like that. And it locks that into place. So the plinth can't go this way. It can't go that way anyway, because I'm going to put that one that side, but that'll lock that in to stop that horrible gap that you get when the, uh, you know, your wife's hoovering. Not just wives do it though. <laughs> That's a bit sexist, I do apologize for that. When anybody... <laughs> You ever seen a grown man backpedal? Here we go. Oh well, God, that's just lost some viewers. <laughs> um, when anybody Sorry. hoovers uh, and smashes the bins, yes, there you go. It can create a horrible gap. They are over yeah. time. Vacuum cleaners. Just a clarification. Oh, uh, vacuum cleaners are unisex. All right. They're non. Or, or, they're or non, genders. Non, it's not gender specific. Non-binary. Yeah. <laughs> non-binary Hoover. Although we have got one called Henry. Anyway, it doesn't matter, we won't go into that. And also that means then that this plinth, I mean, you could just glue it, problem done, but then you can't get the plinth back off. And what's under here, all our plumbing and things. So we need access. And chances are, in your kitchen, anyone's kitchen, there's things under here that you will need access to in the future. So it's, uh, it's ace, it's not a great idea. So cheers Dave for that, if you can remember us from a year ago. Yeah, so we'll fit them now, and then uh, we'll crack on with these 
Fit a bit of brass, how about that? Right, just to hammer home these um, Pro Innovations plinth lock things. Uh, Richard's got this plinth all sorted. There's a cut out there for under the dishwasher. Uh, we did a, a job before our YouTube days. It was Howden's kitchen, but I've no idea where the appliance come from. And as you open the, the, the door to the dishwasher, it moved up, didn't it, Rich? It, did, yeah. it moved up it out the way, so you didn't have to do that ugly thing. But uh, anyway, this one doesn't do it. Anyway, moving on. Um, yeah, print lock. So uh, Richard set it all out, put the clips on either side, and then put the clip on. You can't see that, it's very, very dark. But there is one just there, and then on that one, just there, look, like so. And then it all just slots in and just really holds that corner together. Now, where these have really come in is that because this dishwasher is at the end of the run, there's no leg there, like so to clip the plinth onto anyway, so it's it's even better. So it's a good solution for that, and as I say, no glues. There are no glues, no glue, no screws that you can see. It's not fixed into place, so to speak, permanently, and it's all removable. So I'll hand you over to my, once again, my glamorous assistant. We've got one already done. Yeah, we've got one behind, which I'll, I'll, show you in a, I'll show you that one in a second. So what we've, what we've done, whether it's water on, we we've established that to get this into the clip that's on that, the male end, if you like, into there, we've took the leg off here to enable us to go in at an angle and then push it in like that. That's what we think's best. That's right, uh, yeah. I'm sure Dave will correct us if it's wrong, because we haven't checked the instructions or anything. We've just gone for it. Of course not. That's what we've done. Blokes, over. So, it's obvious, isn't it? So, once you line it up at the back, which it is, that's what we're saying. I've got, I've got that sort of in without pushing it tight. And I don't think I could have got that in if I'd have had both the clips on. I think it'd have ended up breaking the clip. But I've left the clip on there. So all I'll do now, I'll put some weight on that. So I'll push the, I'll just push that in like that. So that's located now. And when I push this in, push it onto the middle leg, not that. And then that pushes onto there and that locks that in place. And that is a beautiful joint. It really is, isn't it? Yes. And it sort of supports this, this can't come apart because they always move because it's on the end of the run. Especially if we can't put any screws in the floor. Because you're it's on the floor heating and the fact that you'll see them. Exactly, there. you can't put it anywhere, you know, so. And that one there, that's just, it's, it's a shame you can't really see it. No, and then this joint down here, which we've done earlier, has a bit of a trial run, because as I say, we were sent these after we fitted the other kitchen. What's all, John? Is that any better? That is better. It's beautiful. I can't see anything there? That's lovely. And that's not coming apart. Beautiful. And if you don't want dirty fingerprints on your plinths, don't get on your hands and knees and touch them. There you go. That's another top tip for you. Right then. So we're going to move on now then to these rails. Once again, this one's already pre-set up for us by uh, by Rich. We'll talk you through those clips when we put them together on this one over here. So all you get then is. Well, I'll let Rich uh, demonstrate and whack it on. So we've got these preformed corners, um, which I'll just actually I've got one here. Right? Okay. Yeah, look. He's one I made earlier. There you go. And there's a little bolt that goes in the back of there to hold this onto this rail, which I've tightened onto that one. I've got the the little bolt, little machine screw, should I say, in the back of that one, ready to go. So. Made it difficult for myself because I've put the clips on already. But there we are. Let's get that. That's it. Because these clips go un under there and in between the cupboard. See if I just move these out the way. Again, this is the thing when you've only done it once before. The other corner. <laughs> Give it a bit of a wiggle. I have already done this. It went in. Typically, off camera. There we are. Give it a bit of a wiggle, and that goes into there like that. And then, I suppose if we show this because it's easier, these clips then just push up, and we can show you how to put these clips on the other one, can't we? Yeah. They just push up, if it doesn't fail the dishwasher. They're like that, tight. And then that's how you screw it in to stop this, this moving. You screw it in there, and it goes in the cupboards and... Beautiful. And there's another yeah. one, the one just behind here. Yeah, that one will go, if I just push that one in tight. There Somewhere we are. Around. I don't know if you can see that. It goes in there and screws in. Under there. And that is basically, that's it. 
really. And then, yeah, lovely. Now we have got, what we'll talk through now very quickly, are some options um, of finishing off. Here they are, look. Finishing off where the rail meets an end panel. And you can have these little, um, I don't know what you call it, little, little stop-ins, I, I suppose, little returns, little, little blanks for the end. Now we've chose not to have them because if I show you on here, this little loft cut, there you go. Put that on there like that. Put that on there like that. Then that goes on like so. But it doesn't cover all of the end panel. So it's sort of, I think that looks unfinished. And also, once the worktop goes on, of which I have a, a sample of, which we're going to be using, like so. If you're stood here anyway, well, fair enough, it, it, it is dark, but you can't, you can only see that wood anyway, because it's not all brass, because that cap isn't all brass, so it's a bit like, I mean, it's nah, it's a nah. It's a no from me, and then when you come to this one, which we've already done, it's nosing back full. <laughs> yeah, yeah. It's. Uh, I think that looks a lot more finished. Is that a phrase? A lot more finished. A finisher. I think yeah, you know absolutely. Yeah, a lot more uh, finished. Because um, then it'll only be up there anyway, and then you'll still see all this. So yeah, it's. Uh, it's a no, and it's the same with if I can find it, um, the bigger ones. You might have to grab out in a second. I did have it out. Here we go. This one here. That go up there and finish that. But then if you open this, cheers Rich. If you open that, it's the same thing. The depth, I'll just show the depth of it. You'll still see, I don't know, what is that? About 10 mil of the uh, of the finish there, of the, the, the graphite. Um, so yeah, again, it, it, it looks a bit, Looks a bit unfinished, so we're gonna we're gonna leave them off like that there. If that was all brass, if that if that covered all of that square there, then yes, definitely, it's a no-brainer. But as it stands, it's a brainer because you'll only see, you know, there. You'll still see if I get my hands right. You'll still see that much of it there. So so now nah, we've left them off. I think that looks much better. But where I have noticed that they fit. The smaller ones, oh yeah, where they do, uh, sorry, I wish I got it, <laughs> is here. If you notice that there, you see, you can see the graphite, you can see the wood, and you can see the brass. Whereas if you put these on, the same clips as we showed you, for these ones here, onto that, all that wood there will be covered in that. So we're gonna take that off, cut it down, the two thicknesses of whatever that is, and then um, and then put them on, and then all that will be brass then. So that's where they do come in. But when it comes to the ends, it's up to you. Do what you want, but I quite like it like that. Don't adjust your sets. You're about to experience the six stages of yes. Now you've seen stages one to three. One yes, two yes, three yes. But you haven't seen. Stages four, five, and six. Stage four, yes. <laughs> Stage five, yes. <laughs> and the best stage of all, six, yes. What do you think about that? Beautiful. We're done, we're fitted, we're ready for the templates. Which, if you're watching this on a day of the release of the video, it should be a Sunday. Have a look around you, is it Sunday? Yeah, there you go. That's happening tomorrow, templating. To be fitted a week on, uh, a week tomorrow, apparently, by all accounts. I'll know more as and when. We'll see where all the joins are going. As I say, I haven't made it easy by having this feature. Here and there, and where you put the join. Some of the drawings, there's a 45 mitered corner basically there, 
whether or not it'll work or not when the template has come, we'll find out. And we'll go for that as and when. But we, as it stands, are happy. What do you reckon? It's nice, isn't it? It'll look nice when the work top's on, obviously. It's going to be a, what they call a waterfall feature. So it comes across and then down to the floor there. Not nowhere else. This is there's the overhang on this side and on this side. Um, yeah, so there we have it. Rich has just done a couple of little finishing points. He's put those brackets, I say brackets, those stop ends in there. You can't see them no matter how hard you look really. But it does look better than having the wood. So having the three different colours there. But in saying that, you can barely see it anyway. And I still think that running these to the end as they are, as they are there, are much better than having no stop ends on. But it's personal preference. It's completely up to yourselves, I suppose. So there we go. Oh, and then of course, doink. <whistles> Beautiful. This is the stoves. Uh, extractor hood, extractor fan, whatever. I haven't taped that up to hide it, it's just the way it's come out of the box. It's only just put up there temporary. Um, I've still got to duct it all in. Extremely, I mean, it might be the best extractor fan in the world, but for 269 quid, that is the flimsiest thing in the world. I'm very disappointed with the, with, with the make of it. You put the bracket on that this hooks onto, and that then puts this so far out of level, it's untrue. So then you've got to put this on first level, so it becomes a multi-person job. Then put the bracket on after it. It's really difficult to get that plumb on. Oh, no, it's not plumb now, as I said. I've just put it up there, just out of the way, just to get the screws safe, if anything else. Because um, it's that flimsy, it's all bending out. They might all be like it, I don't know. And as I say, it might be the best extractor fan in the world. But as a thing to fit, when you actually see the actual, the bulk of it, your money's worth, uh, hmm, yeah, well, okay. Must try harder, check this out. Oh yes, he has a fridge. Beautiful. Which of course I'm gonna turn off while I've got nothing in it. Cause I ain't buying the money. Freezing as well, as you know. Excellent, it's all there. So there we have it then. So I think what we'll do now is have a quick chat, oh, for those of you who have noticed, a couple of things. End panel short on that. Well, I've got an off cut, so we'll be okay for the templating for there. Um, that's been sent out as and when. And I just thought I'll show you, why not? This middle door here, the freezer door, look how warped that is. So that means changing as well. We've got to get that sorted. No amount of adjusting is going to, is going to sort that out. I know you can probably see it there really but it does it right kicks out right at the top and as you say there's no adjusting that there's no pulling that back and they all come on the cupboards on the cabinets themselves so we haven't took it off left it somewhere um it was dropped off and it was one of the first things to go in so it's just the way it is not a problem it'll get sorted it'll get sorted no doubt rich has done a very good job of these little uh just little bits, isn't it, that make all the different scribe and all that in. And just, uh, that's just, um, that's just plinth, that is, just flat along the top. To frame all that, beautiful. The, uh, the Profit in uh, Innovations um, plinth clips that we used can also be used, as you can imagine, on your scribes as well. Now we didn't on these ones, that's got something screwed to the cabinet behind it and then had it screwed through onto that. So that's how that was all made up, but you can use those clips as well. So it's, it's not just for plinths, it's for uh, your scribes as well. A very, very good idea and they work and they are, where they meet, they are solid. And as I say, there's no leg here because the end of the run is the, what's that called, dishwasher. So there's no leg there. So it's helped there as well. So there we go. Grab yourself a box of them. I'll put a link to them in the description or at least a link to the to the website. Uh, because this is an end panel, um, it, it isn't a cabinet because of the, um, or a base unit, whatever you want to call it, because of the dishwasher. You sort of make that up yourself. Rich had to cut that out um, himself 
to run that all the way through. You could have been squared and gone into it, but I quite, I, we had a chat about it. And because we're having a waterfall worked up, going around, I think that'll look nice. That then will go straight into the into the granite there. Um, I'll tell you what, means that this is the granite that we're going to use. It'll go like that, like so, which I think will look rather nice, but lovely. Uh, which means that that bit was exposed there and Rich is in a very nice job of, of cutting a piece of a plinth and gluing it on and finishing it all off. And once that's on, obviously, going back to it, that will be absolutely, where it will be, it'll be like that, won't it? Absolutely beautiful. So there we have it, right there. I'm gonna wait, I'm gonna go home now, it's late. So I'm going to uh, have a chat with you now regarding what's what we're going to do next at the job and i'll leave you to have your evening to yourself all right beautiful oh and i might even have a, a cup of tea boiled in the kitchen with milk out the fridge what do you reckon hey eh? how's that for a step forward but before i do that i've just realized that i haven't got the cooker in place now this cooker i took out of a job when was it? 2017, I think. They were replacing it. It had an extension done and they, they wanted it gone. But it's a 1100 wide 7 burner range master thing and they, it was near enough brand new. It was bought, well, it was in the house when they bought it. And uh, I said, well, can I have it? You know, if you're going to get rid of it, I'll give them some money towards it and whatnot. And, and it's been in the storage, and by storage, posh way of saying shed, uh, ever since. And the whole kitchen has been designed around that thing because they're expensive. I got it for a steal and I'm going to use it. So, uh, yeah, we're going to clear all the stuff out now, get it out, get it in place. And then we'll see how she's, uh, how she's held up over the years inside. It's all well protected. It's all nice and dry in here. Needs a bit of a clean. Maybe uh, a couple of quid spent on a bit of a refurb or something. I don't know. By an expert, we shall see, but uh, yeah, let's see how she looks in place. And there we go. Isn't she lovely? As Stevie Wonder once said, well, not that you'd be able to appreciate it, obviously. But there we have it. I think she's scrubbed up quite lovely. It's not the first time I've said that. Uh, it's got all the stuff of it, it's got all the, the grills, all you know, all the all the metal iron mongery stuff i'm just going to clean it all up uh and then get that on there it's, got, it's all got to come back out anyway to get connected it's got a plug on it i don't know about that for regs but i have to run it past the electrician get it all sorted get it done properly whatever but that is beautiful it's not range master it's stoves uh i said that wrong earlier which is why i bought the stoves cooker hood uh, to match even though that's the unplumbable chimney I've done it. It's, oh man, what a flimsy piece of kit that is. It better suck. I've said that before and all. Uh, right then, uh, enough of that. Uh, <laughs> uh, let's, uh... <laughs> right, we'll move on quite swiftly, shall we? Pretend that didn't happen. Um, but right then, hope you enjoyed that. If you've never fitted a true handleless kitchen before, maybe some hints and tips there. But again, it all depends where you get it from. We've had loads of kitchens over the years, fitted them, I mean. Um, and they all have, each company has little nuances, their little differences that they like to chuck in. So what we did here might not be relevant to you, depending on where you, where you get yours from. But if you do fancy getting the kitchen and you're in the lookout, and you uh, wondering where to go, then Aristocrafts, uh, Briley Hill, their details, everything will be in the description of this video. Um, we actually got it from the, their trade arm, so same building, same place, same uh, showroom, which is massive by the way. Um, it's actually called Mood Kitchens, as we say, it's their trade arm. Uh, there's no affiliation, they're not paying for this video at all. In fact, it's quite heavily the other way around. But um, no, they'll be nice, uh, really good, really helpful. Um, Stu came out on a day of delivery and just said, uh, give us some hints and tips of how, how it all goes together, these rails, that kind of thing. And they've been really helpful. So uh, yeah, big thumbs up from me uh, for them. Thank you very much. Uh, next episode, this week coming, we're going to be sorting this out. So next Sunday, this, from your point of view, 
will be complete. Lint label at top, get on into regs for the fireplace, which I said in the last episode, which is through me a little bit. With that, we'll go through all that, we'll build a hearth for it. Uh, whilst that's going on, we've got uh, Mitch is coming back, he's going to commission the heating. Yes, not only are we going to have lights, we're going to have heat, which is ice, hopefully as well. We're going to get the underfloor heating uh, commissioned. So, the hell. Put this jumper down for a bit, so I reckon, you never know. Excellent, get this floor dried out and get it laid. We shall see about that, fingers crossed. Right then, as I say, I hope you enjoyed that, and until next time, uh, take care.